Welcome back to Frontline News. I'm Javon Keyes. It's now time for Frontline Business. As the business community braces for another round of losses, the Jamaica Gasoline Retailers Association, JGRA, has added its voice to thrashing the government for its decision to tighten the daily curfew. Now, the private sector group, which represents gas station operators, says the sector is and will now have to go back to the drawing board as the curfew will curtail business. Pre-COVID, we had 24-hour gas stations in Jamaica. Now, we have no 24-hour gas stations in Jamaica. Now, most gas stations would have been reduced when the curfew was at 10 to 2 shifts. When it goes down to 8, then what to eight, the 8 p.m. curfew, what we're saying now is that you don't, you are not able to operate even for two shifts. So your sales has declined by anywhere from 30% to as high as 60%. You still have all your overheads to cover. You still have your staff to pay. It's just a very, very difficult time for us with the curfew. And Mrs. Pram is reiterating the question of efficiency of the revised curfew. And what concerns us as well is that we do not think it will achieve the objective, the desired objective. If we want the cases to be reduced, concentrating the same activities in shorter hours, all it does is allow people to be crowded. It creates chaos on the road and and traffic jam. So people are going to do what they have to do in a shorter window. So it creates congestion. In keeping with COVID-19 protocols, the Bank of Jamaica BOJ has announced that effective immediately, its teleservices will be suspended. In a media release, the BOJ disclosed that commercial banks or deposit-taking institutions will now be the point of contact for the public for foreign currency transactions. The central bank says it will continue to monitor the situation and provide updates. The Jamaica Stock Exchange is reporting that listed company Iron Rock recorded improved financial performances for the last quarter of 2020, which ended December 31. The JSC says Iron Rock racked in earnings totaling $39.4 million versus $3.5 million in the previous year. The success is attributed to increased net commissions and reduced net claims. Now, Iron Rock's gross written premium went up nearly $7 million to $233.8 million. Now onto stocks in Friday's trading session, the JSC combined index co advanced by 4,000 for that should be 4,044 points to close at under 400,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 86 stocks, of which 48 advanced, 28 declined, and 10 traded firm. The junior market index advanced by 7.52 points to close at under 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for 138 Student Living Jamaica, 1834 Investments, Barita Investments, CAC 2000, and Caribbean Cement Company. Stocks declined for Access Financial Services, Berger Paints, Blue Power Group, Carbon Assurance Brokers, and Dermont Trading Company. Trading firm were AMG Packaging and Paper Company, Cargo Handlers Limited, Dermont Trading Company, JMB Group, and JMB Group 7.25% preference shares. Jamaica Broilers Group was the volume leader with 5 million units, followed by Jamaican Tees Limited with 2.5 million units, and Lasco Distributors Limited with 2.3 million units. And now the foreign exchange. Now on to commodities. Oil prices fell on Friday, weighed down by a build in U.S. crude inventories and worries that new pandemic restrictions in China will curb fuel demand in the world's biggest oil importer. Now Brent crude fell 60 cents to $55.50 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude slid 86 cents to settle at $52.27 a barrel. And that's it for Frontline Business. I'm Javon Keyes. Pleasant viewing.